Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. I want to make a video today. I'm gonna to call this how to save locations for your YouTube videos in Google Maps because there is one video about this on YouTube and so I'm kind of repeating the information of that video. But I think uh, this is actually a really useful feature, not only for travelers and people exploring, uh, you know, different locations around the world, but actually also for people just exploring places in their own city for making YouTube videos. That's often how I find uh, how I find places so far to make videos of is just scouting the map. I call this Google Map scouting. It's a scout location scouting for lazy people. So what I often do is just go on to Google Maps and the beauty of this uh, system is that, you know, Google has a few different mapping products. There is Google Maps, there is Google My Maps. This is all built into Google Maps. So what you can do, I'm just kind of going over, I have to run an errand somewhere in this area later today. So I thought, you know, maybe there's somewhere interesting I could check out for YouTube. So let's say I zoom in and I say, hey, I never knew there was a little park here. Um, so what you can do is click onto a Google map uh, location and then click on the saved icon. I've already saved this here and I've got a list called YouTube. There's a few ones that populate by default. Um, just, you know, all you have to have is a Google account. You get all this stuff. It's baked into Google maps. The great thing about this is that, um, assuming you have the Google maps application on your phone, Everything you do, I'm using the uh, my desktop computer here, everything you do on the web is going to sync to the phone. So you can make all your lists here from a, you know, it's much easier I find to work from a desktop computer always. Um, and then when you go out and about and you've got your Google map application, you're gonna get all this information. So I save this to YouTube and it's a garden as well. So I may as well put it there. But let's say I wanted to create another list so you can assign the same place to multiple lists. So I'm gonna say this is in, Talpiot in Jerusalem, so I'm gonna call this uh, Talpiot Gardens and click on create. Now it's associated with three different lists and I can actually go into, let's take this Jerusalem Gardens list, right? So I can actually view my list and I can, I can also hide it, I can add a description to it, Gardens in Jerusalem that I want to check out. Um, I can add places directly like this I can also change the privacy settings. If I, I don't actually have to, it's auto saving edits, I don't need to save this. I can just go back, right? Now that's got my little description here. And if I click onto the share icon, I can change its privacy setting from uh, private to share to public. So this is like another way of sharing information on, uh, on Google. There, you can also create a custom Google map and create and have its privacy open to public. So, um, but this you don't need to leave. So Google has kind of some overlapping feature sets. So let's say it's something that wasn't, doesn't contain any private information. I'm like, sure, I'll be happy to make this uh, map public. Now I have a link to share and this list is going to be, it says your content will appear publicly with your profile name and picture. Um, and so other people can you find and use that information. I'm gonna move mine back to private. I can also share it and use the kind of common way for, uh, for sharing information to use this link and then share it with users here, okay? So that's basically all there is to it, but it's obviously a very powerful feature. Now, what if somewhere doesn't exist? So I can say, let's say there's no name. So I did it, I did it in this case here with this park. It wasn't named on Google. I could just see there was a park here. So what you can do is double click Sometimes you have to like click a few more times and double. There you go. And eventually you'll get the geo coordinates for this location. Then click on those geo coordinates. Okay. And now you can actually save this, even though it doesn't really have a name, I can save this to my Jerusalem gardens list. So even if it's not a property, and now of course, if somewhere's missing, you can also add a missing place. And I do this actually quite a bit um, to add missing information to Google Maps. But even if you don't want to do that, you can just add it by geo coordinates. So whether it's a common place or not. So I think this is a really great way for uh, discovering because you know Jerusalem, like any city, is full of all these. You know, there's the hot spots like the Western Wall, the old city. I'm trying to find the more off the beaten track places, and there's just so much data layered onto Google Maps that if you can, you know, you can just investigate places. I like this as well because when you're in Google My Maps. Um, it takes you to a separate interface and you're not able to see all the information of the places that you're looking at. So you, because this is a Google Maps feature, you can go through um, places of interest, you can read 
you can see the photos about them, you can read reviews of them. And then if you determine that they're worth visiting, you can then just quickly add them to your list. Hope this video was useful. I think it's a really great feature from Google and subscribe for more videos.